okay, that, and more proof that the so-called blacks are Spanish Native Americans, okay, John 832, John 832, okay, blacks and Spanish Native Americans are the Israelites, mm -hmm. are the true Jews the Bible speaks of, and they were never done away with, and they're still here, contrary to what the scholars or the so-called uh, history makers, okay, like to say that they're the lost 10 tribes. We're going to continue to prove that that's not the case. We're also going to continue to prove that the people we know as Jews are not the Jews, okay? John 8, 32, okay? Because there was something that Christ said, okay, in the New Testament that's very profound and which is leading to why we are here today, okay, on 116th Street in Lexington Avenue. Go ahead. The book of John, chapter 8, and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So this is Christ saying this. Okay, now a lot of Christians, they hear that, they're like, oh yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But they don't know that there's a lot of meat, there's a lot of info in that statement that the Most High Christ, the Black Messiah made. Okay? The truth. Okay? The truth is what? We're not free right now because we believe that we're Blacks, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Hispanics, African Americans, uh, Jamaicans. Okay? That, that title, those titles that the so-called uh, slave masters gave us, is what one of the things that has us in captivity in our minds, okay? Spiritually, you brought out earlier, you don't feel a connection with Africans, okay? But there's some so-called blacks that feel that connection, they call Africa the motherland, not knowing that that's not really their motherland, Jerusalem is, okay? So now, sister, I'm gonna show you more proof because the brother brought out in the, in the New Testament that the covenant was only made, right, with the Israelites, correct? That's right. And they were not, and they was, uh, that's what Christ came for, to keep the covenant with the Most High, okay, and the Israelites. I'm going to prove to you that that was prophesied, give me Isaiah 46 and 10 first, in the Old Testament, okay, that it was the Israelites, the true Israelites, you so-called blacks and Spanish Native Americans, were never going to disappear. We're always going to be here. I'm going to show you a handful of scriptures that are going to prove that every nation that was here after the flood is still here today. Where I told you to go? Okay, right. here, listen to this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 46 and verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning. So this Bible, okay, the most I say, declaring the end, the end of times from the beginning. Now, that don't mean that the whole time is going to end. That don't mean that the earth is going to be destroyed. When you read the, when you say the, when you read the Father's prayer, the Lord's prayer, the Our Father, He says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. So the earth is not going to be destroyed like the so-called scientists and all these people say. That's never going to be the case. What's going to be the case is the kingdom is going to be rebuilt by us, so-called blacks, Hispanics, the Israelites. That's and right. the kingdom will be established again the way it was always supposed to be from the beginning. That's right. That's where thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth means. In order for that to happen, the people that were in rulership from the beginning that always had the rulership, uh, uh, sanctioned by the Most High God cannot have been disappeared or gone. Okay? Read, read. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. So from ancient times, the things were written in this Bible that are not yet done. Go ahead. Say, my counsel shall stand. The Most High God said, my counsel, my words in this book, they're going to stand. I don't care what anybody says. A brother walked by before saying this is a fake book. He don't care about that. What does he say? My counsel will stand. The Lord's word is going to stand regardless. The Lord said that if we didn't follow his commandments, you so-called blacks, Hispanic, Native Americans, we were going to go into slavery. We went into slavery. Did we not? Starting in 1492 with the conquistadors, the wicked devil Christopher Columbus. Okay, so you so-called Hispanics were first in slavery before the so-called blacks. Understand your history. Don't take our words. That's in the Bible. What did you say, sis? That's true, is it not? This is coming from a little sister. Finish reading that. And I will do all my pleasures. Most High God said he will do all his pleasures. Everything going on in the Middle East, which I'm going to cover here in a few minutes. That's the Most High's pleasures. This plane getting shot down, that's the Most High's pleasures. Oh, but God's a loving God. Give me Exodus 15 and 3. Let's see the God that we serve to see if he's a loving God for hugs and kisses. The Most High God loves his people, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans only, but he's not playing with anybody. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 15 and verse three. The Lord is a man of war. He's a what? A man of war. The Lord is a man? 
a physical man. You read that in Exodus 33. And he's a what? A man of war. He's a man of war. Okay, give me Matthew 10, 35, 36. Okay, let's see if Christ, this fake image here that we see looking all soft or hugs and kisses, if he came that way, or if he was a hardcore dude like the image that we have there. Okay, that's a depiction of what the Bible said. We're not saying that's how he looks. That's a depiction. Go ahead. What, did, what did Christ say he came to do? The book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 34. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. Christ said what? Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. Christ said think not that I come to send peace on earth. Go ahead. I come not to send peace but a sword. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Read that again. I came not to send peace but a sword. Oh, wait a minute. The image of him like this will hugs and kisses. But I have come not to send peace but a sword. What do you need a sword for, brother? If I come with a sword, what am I coming with? To destroy, right? Does that look like this image here, like we were taught his children, that he's all hugs and kisses? The most I just said in Exodus 15 3, he's a man of war, and his son, Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, said what? I have come not to send peace, but a sword. But a sword. So these are all things when Christ said in John 8, 82, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We got to rewash our minds. This is why the prophets are here today, us teaching our people, okay, waking you up to who you are according to the Bible. That's now, right. Now, going back to the sister, the Israelites were never done away with. Give me Jeremiah 35, 36. Remember, in Isaiah 46 and 10, the Most High God said, his counsel shall stand, meaning whatever he says in his Bible will, has, and continue to happen until the Christ, Christ comes, returns, the black Messiah, to put us back in our proper rulership, to save those who have repented, okay, and follow the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Read. Here's the proof that the Israelites were never done away. Jeremiah 35, 31, start at 35. We'll read it, 35 and 36. All right, go ahead, read. The book of Jeremiah, verse, uh, chapter 31, verse 35. Thus saith the Lord. Who's saying this? Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Most High God, the Lord, go ahead. Which giveth the sun for a light by day. Most High God gave the sun for a light by day. And the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night. The moon shines us and the stars light us up at night. He uses the word ordinance. Ordinance is another word for laws. So that means the sun and the moon do not do anything that they're supposed to do unless the Most High God commands them to. He's the creator of the whole earth, of everything on this earth. Go ahead. Which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. Most High God in the beginning of Genesis, he created the land, the firmament, and the water. He divided the sea with the land that we live on today. Go ahead. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Lord of hosts is his name. Go ahead. If those ordinances depart. If what? If those ordinances depart. Is the sun still here? Is the moon still here? Is the water still here? Is this land that we are still here? Read it again. If those ordinances depart from before me. If those things depart, which we just established, they're still here. Go ahead. Save the Lord. Save who? Save the Lord. The most high God. Go ahead. Then the seed of Israel. The what? Then the seed of Israel. Go ahead. Also shall cease from being a nation. So have the Israelites ceased? Or are we still here? The 12 tribes of Israel. We are still here alive in the flesh. We're just asleep and we don't know it. And that's why the Most High God, give me Jeremiah 3.15. This is why the Most High God told Jeremiah this. Because in your churches, you are not being taught. Are you being taught in the church about this? Has anybody here that got a church, priest, Catholic, uh, Episcopalian, uh, Jehovah's Witness, have they showed you these scriptures in the Bible? No. Why not if they're in the same Bible that the Most High God commanded us to read to our people, okay? That's what upsets me. That's why we up here at the Bible says, cry aloud, spare not, we commanded to raise our voice, okay? Hold that, give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Here's why I speak the way I speak, with passion, with conviction, okay? Because that's the only way our people are gonna be woken up, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, okay? This is why I'm the way I am right now. This is why when our brothers are up here teaching, we're here because we love our people. We, I love you, 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 you. We pray that you all wake up. Unfortunately, according to Zechariah uh, 13, 
two-thirds, 66% of you blacks, Hispanic, Native Americans are going to die when Christ returns. I'm sorry. I pray everybody here repent. Okay? But it's not going to happen. It's a fixed fight. Remember what he said in Isaiah 46, the most high. Declaring an end for the beginning. His counsel will stand. Read. This is why I, we, we speak loud. Okay? Man. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Solomon said, surely oppression, the state of our people. We are an oppressed people as a nation. Okay? Look at our barrios. Why are they calling the barrios? The ghettos. Okay? This is, these are the conditions that we're in. All right? Yes, there's a power right now that's ruling the earth and the Caucasian that's part of it. But when you read the Bible, that happens because most like God, that's a punishment from the Lord. Understand that. He uses the so-called white man as a vessel to put out those punishments. But he said it here in the Bible. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 15. Okay? He said in the Bible, matter of fact, give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1, and then we're going to go to 20, uh, 28, to, uh, 28 and 1, and then 28 and 15. Let's see what the Most High God told your forefathers, okay? The Israelites, when we took us out of Egypt, out of slavery then, what's going to happen to us if we did good and if we did bad. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently. And we should listen. The word hearken means listen. Diligently means doing it. I mean, like, like, it, like it's second nature. Okay? Like we do. Uh, the men, we grow our beards. Today's the Sabbath, from Friday night to Saturday night. We out here teaching, doing the Lord's work. We're not buying. We're not selling. We're not cooking anything today because we're commanded in the Bible not to do those things. The Sabbath is Friday night to Saturday night, not Sunday, like these churches like to teach. Go ahead. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Go ahead. To observe and to do all his commandments. No, some of the commandments. All his commandments. All the commandments. Go ahead. Which I command thee this day. So the God said, if we uh, do all his commandments that he commanded us, read. This day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. You hear that, brother? We're going to be set up high above all nations if we follow the commandments. Okay? Now let's see the flip side if we don't follow the commandments. Remember, scripture before that says, surely oppression making a wise man mad. I don't like seeing my people like this. We're kings and queens. That's what we were established on this earth to be. But because of our wickedness, we have become a low state of people. Let's see if that was prophecy in the Bible. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Three. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now there's a, there's a, a, a flip side. With every action, there's a reaction, is there not? There's a negative and a positive. The positive was Deuteronomy 1, uh, 28 and 1. We were going to be set on high above all nations. Now here's the negative, if we didn't follow the commandments. Go ahead. To observe, to do all his commandments Go ahead. and his statutes, Go ahead. which I command thee this day. He commanded to follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead. That all these curses. All these what? All these curses. All these what? All these curses. The most like High God said, if we don't follow his law, statutes, and commandments, all these curses that are in Deuteronomy 28. Go ahead. Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Shall come upon us and overtake us. Give me the one about curse shall not be in the field. Okay, so let's see, because I said, look at us in the body, how we're living, right? Let's see if that was prophecy in the Bible. Verse 16. Remember, he said he was going to give us curses without following the Lord's statutes and commandments, right? Okay. Curse shall thou be in the city. Curse shall thou be in the city. Are we not cursed here? Let me ask you something. Do you own any of these buildings here? Do you any of your family members on it? Any of your family members on it? Who owns these buildings? The who? The so-called fake Jews, which we're going to prove that. And that's a good point, because you don't know yet that they're, the, that they're not the real Jews. You weren't here earlier. You're right. The Jews only. The other nations. Okay, and I'm going to show you in the Bible that was one of the curses. Go ahead. And curse shall thou be in the field. In the field. Okay, and our job. First, uh, uh, last hire, first fire. Okay, we're at the Lord of Totem Pole. Are we not? Go ahead. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Even the ones of our people that have businesses, Guess who they got to pay taxes to? They're oppressed of the so-called white man. Our people can own this store right here. Guess what? They miss a tax payment, they ain't got that store no more. Right or wrong? So do we have control? This is our neighborhood, isn't that? El Barrio, right? 
Spanish Harlem, if you will. But where's our ownership in it? Oh, what? Because they named the street after Luis Munoz Marie? Okay? They do that, and guess what? That people go like this. They fall asleep. Oh, you see, the white man loves us. They named the street after us. Do you know that every street in New York, I'm just going to speak for New York, is named after one of the slave masters? Okay? Think about that. It ain't our people. And then when they do name it after our people, they still leave their, the oppressor's name on there. They never take it off completely. Malcolm X Boulevard is still, what's that, 8th Avenue? Lennox. Okay, still 8th Avenue. Yeah, 8th Avenue. Okay, Martin Luther King is still Lennox. Was Lennox our people? No, Lennox was one of our slave masters. Okay? Mm. These are the things that the Christ, Christ said, the truth shall make you free. We are out here to wake our people up with the truth according to the Bible of who we are. Okay, of what you need to do to get everlasting salvation. Where I told you to go? Uh, we're at 2815, right? Give me, uh, give me, uh, uh, 20, give me uh, 28 and uh, uh, 30, 32. 32. Let's see the other prophecies in the Bible if we did not follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead. Verse 32. Thy son and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Did this not happen to the so-called blacks? Were we not given it to another people in slavery? Were we not put on the ocean blocks and sold to the slave masters? The so-called white people? Did it not happen to the so-called Hispanics and Native Americans? They made over 300 covenants with, with the Native Americans, the so-called white men, and broke every one of them. Let's go, brother. The Bible's a true book. The brother brought it out earlier. The Bible don't play. Y'all, a lot of y'all say that the brother walked by before, that's a fake book, the white man wrote that book, all that stuff. Guess what? The white man used this book to keep y'all asleep. Because why? He did not allow us to read. When, the, when, when Christopher Columbus came, you look at the images here. This, this Indian cacique, chief, okay, from the Northern Kingdom, a so-called Hispanic, was burned to the torch. And you see he has a cross. He was trying to force him to, to, to Christianity, to worship this white image beast right here. That's what this was all about. They refused. Read a book called American Holocaust and Bartolome de las Casas. Bartolome de las Casas was a frias, a friar, uh, uh, a Spaniard, okay, who is not our people, who wrote all the accounts and the atrocities that Christopher Columbus and the conquistadors, because conquistador means to conquer, does it not? Yeah. Why would you come with conquerors if you came in peace? And every October, our people are dancing in a parade, dancing salsa on floats. Worshiping that devil. The man that put our forefathers into captivity. But guess what? Some of y'all may be saying, oh, well, that happened to them. That didn't happen to me. First of all, that's hateful. And you know what? You need to repent from that spirit because that's your forefathers. But guess what? The Bible talks about something called regeneration. All of us were in that slavery. We just don't have that remembrance. Now, that's in the Bible. I'll show you later if we got time. Where I told you to go? Go ahead. Read this. The see, book of Habakkuk. Let's see if it was prophecy that what happened to the Native Americans, uh, 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 Indians, and our people in the Caribbean was going to happen. Go ahead. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 12. Go ahead. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. Woe to them. Woe means destruction to them that build a town with what? With blood. In order to take over these lands, we were here ready. How did they take it? Hey, man, can I just have this? Or did they come? Fishers with swords. Did they come with cannons? And we just had arrows. Okay? And as a result of that, there was blood on the streets. That's why the scripture says that. Go ahead. Establisheth a city by iniquity. And established a city by iniquity. After they conquered, they went ahead and started naming streets Lexington. That's not our people. Okay? Go ahead, read it. The book of Lamentation. Chapter 5 and verse 2. More prophecy in the Bible. Go ahead. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our what? Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our inheritance, this land. He read it earlier. You were here, you were here. The land of Osiris. Okay? Was turned to strangers. It says it here, JewishEncyclopedia.com, that this land in the Bible calls it Osiris. That the North, Central, South America, and the Caribbean islands was given for our sakes. Wait, wait, y'all don't understand that. Give me Isaiah 40, and you know what I want. Because this whole world was made for every single one of you so-called blacks and Native Americans. You may be saying, what about everybody else? Guess what? They're being groomed right now to be our slaves. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. They all serve a purpose. Everything that the most sight. Hold that. 
Lamentations 5 and 2. How's it say? Yeah, he's getting it. He's getting it. He's getting it. Hold that Lamentations 5 and 2. Okay? And get me. Uh, go to Lamentations 5 and 2. See if it comes back to me. The book of Lamentations, chapter 5 and verse 2. Check this out. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. That's where I was. Go Isaiah 40. You know what I want. Okay? No, matter of fact, give me 2nd Ezra 6. That the world was given for us. Okay? It says our inheritance. So if you, if someone passes away, you're, let's say, okay, God forbid, I know it may be alive or not. Jesus is an example. The father passes away, he leaves you land. Okay? A house or something like that. That's an inheritance, is it not? So now, here's some comes someone else and says, you know what? I know your father gave you the house, but it's mine now. Oh, I'm not giving it up because you know you're not going to give it up. <laughs> you're dead. Now it's my house. He just established a city through blood. That's exactly what happened when they came over here, the Europeans, in the form of the pilgrims, that every Thanksgiving, we foolishly and ignorantly celebrate. <laughs> Little do you know that the turkey represents the bodies of our forefathers that were sliced, and the cranberry sauce represents the blood that was spewed out. But every Thanksgiving, we there happy. What's so happy about it? It ain't happy for our people. It's happy for the so-called white people because they're still in rulership. Understand something, understand. This is not a racial campaign. Absolutely not. What did Christ say? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I celebrated Thanksgiving, Christmas, Happy New Year's, uh, 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 Mother's Day, Father's Day, Memorial Day, all those wicked holidays that are not in the Bible, until I was woken up with this Bible, okay, and told that I am the true Son of God. That's right. Not what the Christianity or Catholicism says, okay, that, we, uh, that everybody could be saved. That's not true. Read what I say. He's the inheritance. The whole world was created for our sakes, and the Bible can prove. The book of 2nd Andrews, chapter 6 and verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. Okay, the brother brought it up earlier. Adam was the, was the one that named all the animals. Okay? It was two Adams. I'm not going to get into that now, but the Adam, he made Adam. Okay? Okay? Or, or named all the things. That's who he's talking about. Go ahead. Of him. Come we all. All right, because we come from Adam, all of us. Go ahead. Ezekiel. And the people also Ezekiel. whom thou hast chosen. Okay, and the people also who thou hast chosen. That's the so-called Black Hispanic Native America. I'll show you in the Bible. Go ahead. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord. Go ahead. Because thou madest the world. The what? The world. The what? The world. Go ahead. For our sakes. The world and everything on it was for our sakes. Okay? for our sakes, and we have let it go through the cracks through our fingers, like sand through an hourglass, like they used to say in days of our lives, right? That's how we let our inheritance, our heritage go by our wickedness. Okay, the brother brought it out earlier, brother. Brother, what's one of the commandments? We gotta keep our full beard, right? See, you didn't know, but now you know. Okay, now you know what you need to do. Brother brought out before, woman should not be wearing pants, right? Attire of a man, okay? The, the woman, let me tell you, my grandmother was born in Puerto Rico and raised. She didn't wear pants until she came to New York. Am I right or wrong, sister? Okay? Our, our, our ancestors, they didn't wear, the women didn't wear pants. Okay? That's the custom for New York. And when did that custom start? During the woman feminist movement. Okay? During the woman feminist movement, America says that everything is okay. Matter of fact, give me Psalms 94. Just to show you that this country that we live in, they're all wicked and against the Most High God. They're all against it. Okay, give me Psalm 94, mischievous, a mischief to the Lord. Okay, because what is one of the things that they passed last year? Yeah. Proposition 8, right? Or some, something like that, right? Proposition 8? Proposition, Proposition, Proposition 8. 8. Proposition, Proposition, 8. Proposition, 8. Proposition 8, meaning that a man and a man could get married and a woman and a woman could get married. That's the law now, right? It passed in the Supreme Court, right? All right? Didn't they say that abortion law is legal too? They're actually forcing employers to pay for a, a, a abortion to, for the day after, whatever those stupid pills are that they got nowadays. Go ahead, read. God Let's show you God that the Bible's is a true book, man. Go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 94 and verse 20. This is Psalms. A lot of you sisters, you women, love the book of Psalms and Proverbs. Here we go. You got to get the real deal here. Go ahead. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? The throne of iniquity. Why does he use the word throne? Because who's in rulership right now? The so-called white man. It's their throne. When you got a throne, you're a king. This is their kingdom right now. What do they call the president? The leader of the free world. He runs the whole world. Okay? Go ahead. Which frameth mischief 
by a law. They frame it mischief by law. Proposi pro proposition 8. Okay, homosexuals could get married. Lesbians could get married. Abortion is okay. Oh, here's another one. If you're a child and you feel you don't like your parents anymore, you could divorce them. Are you kidding me? I would have came with something else like that to my mother. I would have got divorced from her, but she would have been locked up. Because I would have been in history. Okay, I come with something nonsense. You got kids calling cops on their parents just because they spanked them. Are you kidding me? This is everything. It's all out of course now, man. All right, what did I tell you to go before that? Let me, give me Lamentations again. Okay, go ahead. Lamentations 5 and 2. All right, go ahead. The book of Lamentations, chapter 5 and verse 2. Go ahead. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our inheritance is the whole world. It was turned over to strangers because we're not in rulership now. Go ahead. Our houses to aliens. Our houses to aliens. What happened when the conquistadors came? The, the houses that we had in Puerto Rico, in uh, Cuba, the Caribbean, in Central South America, they just went over them and took it from them. Okay? And built their houses on there. Go ahead. We are orphans our and fatherless. We are orphans and fatherless. Why? Because right now, we have no no uh, no God, okay? In our mind, the ones that haven't repented, we have nobody that's there to protect us. When you're an orphan, you have nobody there. And what? And fatherless. Okay, we feel that there's no hope, that there's no answer. We're showing you the answer right here. That's why we're standing here, okay, on, on July 19th, on the Sabbath day, the Lord's day, okay? I'm 116 and legs to wake you so-called black Hispanics up, okay? Our mothers are as widows. Okay, go ahead, because they killed all, when the conquistadors came, they killed all the, all the husbands, all the men that had the wisdom of who we were. Okay, you knock out the men that have the wisdom, you can tell all the kids whatever you want, they got nobody to teach them anymore. Okay, of who they really are. You see why, a lot of reasons why we don't remember who we are anymore? They say it only takes a hundred years for a person to forget their nationality and their culture. That's not a lot of years. Okay, so now, now, do you understand that the Israelites were not done away with? Okay, but, but you said they were, though, but you understand now, though, right? There was very little lack of knowledge in maybe that moment. What we're taught. How about that? What we were taught. But guess what? Today is your day, sis. Okay? Okay. But what they say is not is. It's not is because it's what the Lord said. What did he say? My counsel shall stand. They'll never be done away. Okay? We were never done away with. Okay? We are here. You're an Israelite woman from the tribe of Israel. Israelite man from the tribe of Israel. Israelite man from the tribe of Judah. Right? So called African American. From the tribe of Judah. This brother's from the tribe of Judah. This brother's from the tribe of Benjamin. I'm from the tribe of Ephraim. Judah. Ephraim. Simeon. The Dominicans are Simeon. Okay? This brother here, Simeon. Simeon, the brother giving up the flyers, Judah. Ephraim right here. He knows he's been following us for, for a few months. He comes here every now and then. Okay, I pray he repents soon too. The scripture says time and chance to us all. Okay. Ephraim, Ephraim. Okay. And spiritually, just to show you. Right. Apara Young, guess what? That's my name. That's my name. That means Ephraim. How'd you know that? How did you know that? How did you know that, sis? Nobody knows that. I didn't, I'm not saying how'd you know my name's Aparia. You didn't know that. How do you know the word Aparia, which is the Hebrew word for Hebrew? My husband was Benjamin. Benjamin, I'm Benjamin right here. So, sis, you've been sitting here this whole time, and you know you're an Israelite woman. I deviated for a while. You deviated for a while. Okay, you got the flyer, right? Thank you, sister. You got the flyer, right? Sister, give me, give me, give me uh, uh, Proverbs 20, 24 and Proverbs 5 and 21. I'm going to show you. because See, I don't know if y'all heard what this, what this sister said here. This is a so-called Puerto Rican woman. Okay? Her and her husband used to study when the truth first came out in the 70s, right? When this truth of who we are, according to the Bible, came out. Okay? And circumstances happen where, see, separated from it. But guess what? She's here today. Guess why she's here? Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. Man's goings are of the Lord. Now the Bible's written in masculine form, but that scripture there is talking about men and women. Meaning what? 
everything that we do, every single minute, every day of our lives, is from the Most High God. Read it again. He, he's the puppet master, and he's pointing our string. We think that we're making all the decisions? Let's see what the Bible says. Man's goings are of the Lord. Uh -huh. How can a man then understand his own way? That's why you thought before I brought up the scriptures the Israelites were done away with. Thank you. That's why you thought you were Puerto Rican. That's why you thought you were black or African American. Okay? The most I did not find a time yet for y'all to wake up, but today is y'all day. And y'all better wake up. Let me explain to you why. And I'm gonna I'm gonna still deal with you, especially that that spirit right there. Okay? Give me second Ezra uh, nine and I start from one. Let me show y'all how this is your day today. And what you do, but listen, we're the messengers. The word angel means messengers. Prophets are messengers. All we're here is to bring the message to your sister. What you do after that, guess what? The Bible says, mark a man. Y'all are marked. Okay? I'm going to show you. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Give me Luke 12. You know what I want about the stripes. Okay? Because some of y'all didn't know who y'all were. Some of y'all didn't know the Lord. Right? That's fine. But the Bible says that even though you don't know, I'm going to show you the scriptures in the New Testament, you're still worthy of stripes. Okay? I'm going to prove that to you. Go ahead. The book of Luke, chapter 12 and verse 47. And this is Christ speaking. Go ahead. And that servant which knew his Lord's will. So that's the servant. We're the one. We know the Lord's will. According to Isaiah 8 and 20, the Lord's will is the Lord's. Father in the Lord. So we know that, which is why we serve the Lord with fear. We follow the Lord's statutes and commandments. So we're the servants that knew his will. But there's a consequence, even though you know the laws, okay, there's a consequence if we stop following the laws. Go ahead. And prepared not himself, neither did according to his will. There goes the laws. Go ahead. Shall be beaten with many stripes. What's that? We own many stripes? We ain't getting the kingdom if we fall out and don't repent. Because we know some, some brothers, some sisters, they're going to fall. The scripture says a just man will fall seven times. That's just a number. You're going to fall in this walk. Paul said he died daily. Okay? He was battling with sin. But he repented every day and kept moving it forward because he wanted to make sure his election was sure. That when he died in Christ, he, when he re rose again, but we are going to rise again. I'll show you that in the Bible. Okay? That it did happen in history. Okay? That he's going to be one of the first ones in line to get the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But now, here's the flip side. Go ahead. Verse 48. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes. You didn't know now. You didn't know you had to grow a beard. I know. I'm not. I, I, now, now, I'm going to deal with you differently because you knew that, Lord. But that's okay. You're my sister, and I love you. And we're going to help you out here. Okay. He has his beard. I don't know if you had the beard the very first time I, I met you, right? You didn't have it for a uh, full hour before. You've always had it. Okay. All right. You don't have a beard. Okay. So you didn't know, but now you know according to Leviticus 21 and 5. 19 and 20 uh, and uh, 21 uh, 1927 okay you're supposed to have a beard that's a law what happens to those people that didn't know shall be beaten with few stripes but you're still going to be beaten you're still going to be chastised the most high still going to make you go to a beard. okay you're still going to be an oppressed people you understand what i'm saying okay there's a flip side where every action there's a reaction ignorance is not a defense just like ignorance is not a defense in, in the white man's court of law ignorance ain't a defense with the most high he don't want to hear, oh, well, I didn't know. That's when Christ said, returns no and he you. comes down to, to, to redeem his people, he don't want to hear, oh, well, Papa Dio, I didn't, I, I didn't know. What did he say? He's a man, he comes with a sword, you're done. Physically. Physically. There's scriptures that talk about that he's, when he comes from all the murders that he's going to do, his, his, his garment looked like it was dipped in a wine, in wine, in blood. Okay, that's in Revelation. Okay, where I tell you to go before that, before Luke? You can't, you can't uh, when I tell you hold it, you gotta hold it, okay? All right, where was it? No, before Luke 12, where was it? Hold on, I'm going to. Okay, 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 so now, get that, drop that, okay? So now, let me pull, I know you already, you, you already know that those Jews ain't the Jews, you know that, right? You already know that. So here's a, 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 a Ephraimite woman from the tribe of Ephraim, a so-called Puerto Rican, as proof, and this is a woman Okay, that you can tell she has experience. Okay, she has experience. She's been around. Okay, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that if you have experience, okay, good or bad or indifferent. Okay, so now let me prove to you that the so called people that call themselves Jews, even they know they're not the Jews. You ready for that? Give me Revelation 2 and 9 again. Okay, Revelation 2 and 9. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works. 
and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. So Christ says he knows the true Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanic, Native Americans, the true Jew, he knows our trials, our tribulation, and our poverty that we're going through, living in our El barrio, living in our ghettos, okay? The, 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 the treatment that we get from the other nation, okay? He knows all that stuff. He knows every single thing that you're going through, that you're going through, that you, 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 he knows that. Scripture says his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. But he also knows this. But thou art rich. We are rich, why? Because we are the elect. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. We are God's chosen. We are the true Jews. Wait a minute, I'm gonna prove it to you. Okay, go ahead. And I know the blasphemy. The blasphemy, another word for blasphemy means lies. The lies of them which say they are Jews and are not. That say they are Jews and are not. But you speak English or Spanish? Both, okay. If I tell you that Jewish man just punched that Puerto Rican guy in the face and ran, and then the cops come and they ask you, sir, what was the description of the man that hit that Puerto Rican guy? What's the description you're gonna give me? Okay, no, no, I said that Jewish guy just hit me. Okay, what's the description you're gonna give me? Guy with a black hat and a black suit and a white shirt. Okay, black hat, black suit, white shirt, right? Okay, that's a Jewish guy, right? Read that scripture again. Because we all, we all believe those people to be the Jews, right? You just said with the description, right? Is that, does that make sense, brother? Right here, the Latifah shirt. Right? That makes sense? Okay, go ahead. I know the blasphemy, the lies, of them that say they are Jews and are not. Christ said they are not the Jews. Go ahead. But are the synagogue of Satan. Whoa! He calls them the synagogue of Satan. They're the damn devil and they know. It. Here's proof. This is a special report. You could get this on. Guess what? Just to show you that we didn't write this. This is from the timesofisrael.com. Go look it up yourself. You sure can, brother. Go take it. Look at it yourself. The time. Look at the website up top. The Times of Israel. Okay, we didn't write this. Go, you can go online right now on your phone and you go to this website and you'll find this article. It says, leak report. Israel, the fake imposters that are in our land, okay, acknowledges Jews in fact are Khazars. When you read their history, Khazars are from the Ukraine, the Caucasus Mountain. Okay? The Caucasus Mountain. It's going to get better. Don't leave, man, because you ain't going to want to miss it because you've been... Let me tell you, hey, you've been a, a, a victim of identity theft and you didn't even know it. You, 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 we all been victims of identity theft and we didn't even know it. And I'm not talking about LifeLock, that they steal your credit card information. I'm talking about your true heritage. They're telling you right here in this article. Israel acknowledges Jews in fact paid off. Secret plan for reverse migration to Ukraine. This was written March 18, 2014. What's going on in the Ukraine and Russia right now? It's a civil war going on, right? Guess what? This article is going to tell you what their plans are. Because they know their time is short. They know that their truth of being a Jew, what they believe is true, have been, been perpetrated, is a lie. Give me Joel 2, and we start from 1. Let's go, brother. Get it quick. Okay? I'm going to prove to you that. Because I had a question from a, 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 a Mexican brother, who happens to be my brother-in-law, who, Lord willing, he'll repent and get saved. He says, well, if those people over there are the Jews, why is there so much wars and battles and turmoil in Israel if they're the chosen people. Well, we just showed you in the New Testament that Christ said they're the liars, the synagogue of Satan. But let's see why there's so much turmoil there. That's all prophecy. Read, brother. The book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Stop. What's going on in the Middle East? Has not for the last two, three years, little by little, Syria, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Iran, Russia. That's the Middle East. Is it not that area over there? Is there not fighting going on over there? Has it just not escalated even more so now with the fake Jews that are in our land in Israel and Hamas, the Arabs, the Palestinians? That's Bible prophecy. You are all living Bible prophecy as you're standing here. Y'all need to wake up and repent, man, and start repenting and following these laws, statutes, and commandments because the time is short. Now, we're not going to hear tell you that's coming tomorrow, next year, two years. We don't know. Matthew 24, 36, Christ says the only one that knows of that day is the Most High God. Not even the angels know. 
But we know that we're in the last days because Christ said, look for the signs. Okay? Look for the signs. Read. Finish reading. And will plead with them there for my people. So the Most High God said he's going to plead. And I don't mean he's going to go on his knees. Exodus 15 and 3 said he's a man of war. He don't beg nobody. He created all of this. He's going to go there. Exodus 15 and 3. He's going to go there. How's he going to plead? Read. And for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. Why does he say who they have scattered? Because it's slavery. It started back in, in, in uh, Assyrian captivity in 722 BC. One of their, the, the, their, their methods of keeping us divided and conquered was by spreading us out through the other nations, just like we are today. That's why the more you start living in these other countries, the less you start, the, 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 the more the, the touch you start losing with your heritage. Okay? That's why we think we Spanish. Okay? First of all, the word ish, whenever you put it behind a word, it means to be like or have the characteristics of. Look it up, I-S-H. Look it up in the dictionary. That's why they call them Jewish. They ain't the Jews. <laughs> That's why they call us Spanish. We ain't from Spain. I'll prove it. When was the last time you went to Spain to visit your ancestors? Okay? As a people, do we go to Spain to visit our ancestors or do we go to Puerto Rico, La Isla, Dominican Republic, Cuba? South America, Mexico. How come we don't go to Spain and we're Spaniards? Okay? They're Spaniards. Where's Spain located? I'm good. What part of is that called on the map? Europe. Are you European? You came here earlier, you said you got a little bit of everything, but that's what we were taught. There's no such thing as mixed in the Bible. He brought out earlier Numbers 1 uh, 18. The seed of your father is what determines who you are. Let me prove it. If I have an apple seed here and I, and I plant it, okay, what kind of tree is going to grow? Apple tree, right? I take that same seed, I go to Japan, plant it in the soil. What kind of tree is going to grow? It's the apple seed. It grew here as an apple tree, right? What's it going to grow in Japan? It's the seed of your father that makes who you are. No such thing as mixed. If your father was from Puerto Rico, okay, there's a 99.9% .9 chance now you're from the tribe of Israel. Okay? Oh, so you may be thinking, hold on a second, hold on a second. You may be thinking, wait, but the Spaniards came in conquered. They laid down. I'm a Spaniard. Give me Hosea 9. Bible answers everything. Because guess what? There are some that are Spaniards. And you know what? I feel bad for you because you're not going to be safe unless you're from the true seed, according to the Bible. Okay? I'm going to prove to you because you said the Spaniards, oh, well, they laid down. They raped our sisters, right? And guess what? Some of our sisters did it willingly. Just like today, a lot of us like to mix with the white man or the other nations. Some of the people even say, I don't like my own people. Some of them who are darker than the ace of space get upset when we show that according to the Bible, Christ is a black man with woolly hair. And they get African Americans so-called get mad when they see that. Are you kidding me? In Puerto Rico, the Loi the Puerto Ricans, the bonafide Puerto Ricans from Loisa Carolina, but don't get along with the ones that are light skinned. There's hate amongst our people that has to stop. And we're gonna prove to you. Hold on, sister. Go ahead. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8. Say, okay, we'll stop from there first. Go ahead. Ephraim, he has made himself among the people. So Ephraim, meaning the so-called Puerto Ricans or the Latin tribe and American Indians, we mixed ourselves amongst the people. We mixed with other nations. Okay, we've been doing this since 722 BC. Go ahead. He folk is a cake not turn. A cake not turn. Father, if I cook in a pancake, what color is the top part and what color is the bottom part? Black and white, right? You see the analogy that the Bible uses? Okay, he says we're a cake unturned. Okay, uh, case in point, this brother, okay, he's from the tribe of Simeon. He falls under Ephraim. That's the so called Dominican. He's darker than me. Guess what? This brother here is Dominican for the tribe of Simeon. He's lighter than this brother. We got brothers here that are here today because they're sick. That are his color. That are Puerto Rican. I use the example of Loisa, Carolina, and the rest. A cake not turned. How did that happen? Okay? Read. Strangers have devoured his strength. Strangers have devoured our strength because that's why the Most High God commanded us not to mix with the heat with the other nation. It weakens our race, our nation. Oh, it may sound racist. That's the Bible talking. Okay? Let me prove to you that the Most High God is for racism if you think about it. Hold that in Isaiah, uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 8. Let's see what the Most High 
plan from the beginning. Let's see if the most I got. Okay, here's a ring. Chapter 32, verse 8. When the most high divided the nation. Who? When the most high divided the nation. When the most high God divided the nation, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam. When he separated the sons of Adam, who is the man that we come from, okay? The Israelites, so-called black Spanish Native Americans, dead. He set the bounds of the people according to the numbers of the children of Israel. So he said he set the bounds. So let's say this is a piece of land here, this square. What's everything around here? Bounds. Is it not boundaries? Bounds is another word for boundaries. So he gave us, when you look at a map of the biblical ancient world, all the 12 tribes was a land except for the Levites. He didn't give them land because they were the priests, which is why we had a tithe, 10% of our goods, not money, of our flock. Okay, to pay them because they were not people. Give me Isaiah 45 and 4. Okay, we are his elect. This is why we are here on 116 elect on the Lord's Sabbath day, waking our people up. Because we're in the last days. We don't know when Christ is going to return, but we know we're short. I was talking earlier. Look at everything going on in the Middle East. Everything. That's all in the Bible. I'm going to read it to you right here in a few. That that's all prophecy in the Bible. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. Go ahead. For Jacob, my servant's sake. Jacob, okay, remember, Isaac had Jacob and Esau. Okay, Jacob as the so-called was the, uh, the forefather of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Esau is the forefather of the so-called white man. I'm gonna show you here. Not only in the Bible, but in books that the scholars wrote. Go ahead. And Israel, my elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, through thou hast not known me. Okay, read it again from the top. For Jacob, my servant, say, Go ahead. And Israel, my elect, I have even called thee by thy name. By thy name. The name of what? Israel. Okay, the name of Israel. Now, I said that Jacob was our forefather. Okay? I said Esau, his brother, when you read Genesis 25, was the, so, is the, uh, the progenitor of the so-called white man. Let's see what the scholars say. This is biblical baby names, okay? Written by a woman. I don't know if her picture's in here. She may be, oh, yep, yeah, matter of fact, it is. By a white woman, okay? A scholar who's done her research and came up with the meanings of all these names. It's called classical biblical baby names, meaning the names that are gonna be in here are names that you're gonna find in the Bible. Let's see who Esau, Edom, is because understand that the world only consists of 18 nations and 18 nations only. When the flood happened, okay, the only ones that, that survived were Noah, his son, Noah, his wife, his three sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham, and their three wives. All of life was destroyed with the flood, was it not? Okay, life started from those three men and they created the 18 nations we got today. Keep that thought in your mind, okay? Here's Edom, okay? Edom, go ahead. Edom! Meaning red. Meaning red. I'm going to show you why it says red. Because, first of all, what do they call the white people down south? Rednecks. Why? Because you can see the blood from their skin. Now, I know you may be saying, wait a minute, but you look like a white guy. I'm going to go back and cover that. Okay? Because it's not about the color of your skin. It's about the seed of your father. I brought that up numerous times in your nation. Okay? Who your father is, is who you are, according to the Bible. Go ahead. And that's in Numbers 118. Go ahead. It's a name sometimes given to Esau in the Bible. It's a name sometimes given to who? To Esau in the Bible. Which was Jacob's fraternal uh, twin brother. Okay, go ahead. There were two reasons when Esau was born. He came out red. He came out what? Red. Now, you're going to re see when I bring out the scriptures that that was a phenomenon in that time, coming out light-skinned. Today, we call that albino, okay? Why? Because the brother brought it out before. In Genesis 2 and 7, he said, the Lord God made man and women from the dust of the ground. What color is the ground? Brown. The deeper you go, the darker the, the, the dirt is. Okay? Go ahead. All his bodies like a hairy mantle. Now, he's also a very hairy dude. Okay? White people are real hairy, bro. Okay? Let's go. And he was so famished, one day he sold his birthright to his swim brother Jacob. So notice, it's giving you the history in the Bible. I'm going to read that to you in Genesis 25 in a minute. He sold his birthright to what? 
his birthright to his swim brother, Jacob. To his swim brother, Jacob, who's our forefather, so-called Blacks, Hispanic, Native Americans. Go ahead. For some red sword. For some what? For some red sword. Okay, for some red stew. It says it in the Bible. Why was it red stew? You gotta read in the Bible. He didn't let him cook it long enough, so the meat was still rare. How do the white people like their meat? Rare. Go ahead. The land of Sir. The land of Seir. Okay, go ahead. The land of Seir, where Esau and his descendants Give me that. Go ahead. said to came to be known as Edom. As they be now, so this person Edom, Esau, came to be known as Edom. Go ahead. Of entrance. Of interest. So it says now it has, if you look, now it says of interest. Now that was in the spirit right there. The, the, the woman put down, the white woman that wrote this book put down of interest. This is something that's going to be very significant, that is very significant in our times today. What is that big significant thing of interest? Of interest. The land of Edom. The land of Edom, go ahead. May also have devoured its name from its red sandstone clay. Okay, now we know that's a lie because we know the reason why the Bible say he came out red was because he was he had no pigment in his skin. White people have no pigment in their skin. Okay? They have recessive genes in them. Okay? Dark people, people who are from the Israelites, we have dominant and recessive. Okay? That's why you can have two dark skinned people. Give me that uh okay, I'll show you a picture of that and have a, 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 a white, like this brother right here, come out looking like him. Okay, go ahead. All right, no, 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 it's not you, Background. You, Background, go ahead. Like Background yeah. story, Eli, the net. Esau, I need Esau. That's good, though. that's good. I need Esau, give me Esau. Excuse me. Hold on one second. Hold on a second. What I'll show you what it means in a minute. If you have patience with me, I'm going to show you. I know it's hard what I'm going to bring out, but it's the Bible that's bringing this out. I'm going to deal with you in a minute, sister. Because you're what? So-called Puerto Rican? Okay. Okay. I'm going to bring this out. I'm going to deal with you very gently because I know it's for a mother. It's very, it's very, uh, it's, it's very emotional what's going to come out from the Bible. You know, you're very like a very... That's true. Uh, you weren't here before. Right, you're right. That is all prophecy. But here's what you're going to understand, sister. I'm not going to get into it right now. I don't want to lose the point, but hold on. You understand something? The Bible, Christ and John, in John 7, 24, it said, Judge not by appearance, but by righteous acts. And I'm going to explain that scripture to you, what it means. Because you're right, we all like My mother is, has green eyes and, 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 and like a 35 my head. Grandmother had, uh, like my grandmother had green eyes. eyes. Guess what? I'm going to explain to you how we all came about with that. Okay? Go ahead. Esau, now here's Esau. Remember, Edom is the name they got. It's also the land that they were living in. Now here's the biblical name also. Okay, go ahead. Esau meaning Harry. Esau, the oldest son of Isaac and Rebekah, was born numerous seconds before his twin brother right, so, Jacob. So they're fraternal twins. They didn't look alike, okay? I mentioned that before. Go ahead. All his body like a hairy mantle. Okay, like a hairy mantle. So we established, okay, when you look at the white people as a nation, they're very hairy. Okay, and they're red. That's why they call them rednecks down south. Go ahead. So they named him Esau. So they named him Esau. Esau is a Hebrew word. Okay, Esau, uh, what is it? How's it pronounced? Uh, it's Esau, something like that. It means wasted away is he. Because when he came out, he looked different from everybody else. Okay, I should. I should. Okay, go ahead. The brothers struggled with an other. They struggled with one another in a womb. The Bible talks about that. Okay, she, uh, uh, Rebecca says, if this is something of you, God, why are the children fighting? She had a very tough uh, 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 childbirth, okay? In those nine months. Go ahead. Struggle with, with other, which okay. began in the womb. Continue all their lives. Okay, which way? Wait, 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 wait. You can't go over that. Which, which, be what? Which began in the womb. So that struggle, that fight, began in the womb, right? While they were, before they were even born. Go ahead. Listen Co up. Continue all their lives. It has continued all their lives. Okay? We are still at odds with the white man. Okay? It's continued all our lives. Go ahead. Esau, a hunter. A hunter, another characteristic of a white man. Who the ones that hunt? Do we go out and hunt deer? Do we go out and hunt deer? Who's known for that stuff? 
You see Rolando Wilson out there fishing, okay? In Philadelphia, they go out hunting. That ain't our people that ain't down with none of that. Okay, go ahead. Was favored by his father. Okay, because he was the first one, so originally he was favored by the father. The first one gets all the blessings, right? Go ahead. While Rebecca preferred Jacob, the, short, the serpent. Rebecca favored Jacob. Rebecca favored Jacob, but she knew the prophecy. Go ahead. But the Lord told Rebecca that of her two sons, the elder shall serve the younger. So now remember, Esau, who was the oldest, who's the progenitor of the a white man today, okay, he came out first, so he's supposed to have all the birthright, right? But what did, what did the angel tell Rebecca? The elder shall serve the younger. The elder, which was Esau, the so-called white man, shall serve the younger, which was Jacob, our forefather. Okay, and I'm gonna show you in the Bible how that's prophecy in the Bible too. All this woman here that wrote this book is quoting the Bible. I started here because I'm going to show you, for those who don't believe the Bible is a true book, that even the other nations, even the so-called white people know the Bible is a true book and it has to do with our history. Go ahead. I believe in the Bible. Go ahead. And that is exactly what happened. Okay. Now, uh, of interest. Let's go to of interest. Here she goes. Now she's saying, right, she's saying of interest again under the word Esau, the name Esau. Go ahead. Of, of interest. According to the communion commandments, according to the commentaries, according to the commentaries on Hebrew scriptures. Hold on a second. Let me read this. Let me say. It says of interest. According to the commentaries on Hebrew scripture. So she's saying that in the Bible, when you read it, you're gonna find that what she's writing here is true. Okay. Go ahead. Esau is considered a sanctified. Esau is considered a significant character in world history, okay? And it goes on to say, and the forefather of the Roman Empire. Now, are the Romans Puerto Rican or were they white, Italian? Okay, so now, she just says Roman Empire, but they were the progenitor of all the white nations, because understand something, there is only one nation of Esau. Everything that you see today, Polish, Russian, it's just Esau being crafty, splitting up the same nation into different sub-nations. But they're still the white man. Give me Genesis 25. Okay? Hold on. So now, I'm going to prove it to you in the Bible that it's a true book. Hold on. Okay, now sister, I want you to listen to this. Now I'm going to deal with you. Okay? And your questions. Okay? You know what it is. Start from 25, start from the top. Genesis 25, verse 21. Now understand, the book of Genesis, Genesis means what? The beginning. In the book of Genesis, you're going to find everything that has been established, that is established today, was established back in the book of Genesis. Okay? I'm talking about land, man, and so on and so forth. Now, the so-called white man has that try to divert and change history, okay? But the Bible is a true book. Remember, declaring the end from the beginning, his counsel shall stand. So the most side is not playing any game. Whatever he established from the beginning, it will be established in the end. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. All right, so Rebecca couldn't have children. So the Most High God blessed this woman, Rebecca, okay, Isaac's wife, okay, with children. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. And she conceived. Okay, she, she, they, they laid down, uh, Isaac and Rebecca laid down, and they made the two children that we're going to be speaking about here uh, momentarily. And the children struggled together within her. Now remember she said that the, 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 they were fighting in the womb. Well, the Bible saying that is true. They were fighting in the womb. She had a very rough pregnancy. You ever seen when the kids are, they, oh, they move and you have children, you know, the stomach, the foot comes out, you see it. Well, these two were in there fighting. Yeah, Go ahead. Fighting. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? So she said, if this is something, listen up, brother, sister, listen up, because I'm going to answer your question now. She's the, she asked the Most High, she prayed, she said, if this be so, if this be a blessing like you sent your angel to tell me it was going to be, why am I have such a rough pregnancy? Why are they fighting inside? Okay, go ahead. And she went to inquire of the Lord. So she went to ask the Lord, why? Go ahead. And the Lord said unto her. And the Lord said unto her. Two nations are in thy womb. What does it say? Two nations are in thy womb. Now let me show you why that's, why that's significant. Because if you were a twin with your brother and you were born, right? Your father's Puerto Rican, let's say, pardon me. Both those kids should be Puerto Rican, right? But that's just common sense, right? But the, well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. But what if the what if the Most High told Rebecca? Two nations are in that womb. So from her birth 
to Jacob and Esau, two nations that are around today were going to come out of her womb. Okay? That's, that's heavy, right? Go ahead. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Now, not only are two manner, two nations in her womb, but two manner of people, meaning two different types of people. Okay? We, are, we don't act the same like the white people. We are different from them, and they are different from us. All praises to the Most High God. Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. One of the nations that are in this, her womb were going to be stronger than the other people. Go ahead. And the elder shall serve the younger. Remember, even this woman said that in the book. Yeah. The elder shall serve the younger. The elder was the Esau, who we're going to show you and prove to you, is the white man. And Jacob is the other, the younger, who is our forefather. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled. So when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, the nine months came up, sis. Okay. Behold, there were twins in her womb. They were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over. The first came out red all over. Now you were here, okay? I asked the man earlier, what do they call people, uh, white people down south? They, they, they call them rednecks. Rednecks. Why? Because the blood... You can see their blood through their skin, okay? Even though you and me are light, we don't see the blood through our skin, okay? Yeah, but I'm talking about extreme. You don't, you're not gray. You understand what I'm saying? You look at it. If we had two that were standing here before, they don't look exactly like us, okay? They're, they're light skin. Okay, right. Go ahead. The first came out red all over, like a hairy gun. Not only was he red, okay? Waste, uh, no color, no pigment in his skin is what that's called, says. He came out very hairy. Okay, they are very hairy people. In fact, we may not have time for it, but when you read Job 30, he describes they were the cavemen. They try to say that we were all cavemen at one time. No, they were the cavemen. But we kicked their behind, the Israelites, and sent them to the caves in the Caucasus Mountains. Okay, the word Caucasian comes from the word Caucasus, which means uh, cave dweller. That's what Caucasus yes, system okay you have to do your research these are things that we're not going to talk that we're not being taught okay caucasian means cave dweller okay okay and they called his name esau why esau esau is a hebrew word being wasted away is he he had no pigment okay go ahead and after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on esau's hair now notice it said after that came his brother but they don't describe how his brother looked why hold that genesis 2 and 7 for the sisters they went here. why didn't he describe how jacob our forefather looked. He just made it a point to describe how Esau looked, but not his brother that came after. Why? Why was that a reason? I'll show you right now. Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground. I brought that up earlier because everybody was people of color with a dark skin. It wasn't until this man, Esau, was born that the white race was created. Okay, I'm going to continue to prove it. Go ahead. And the breath of his nostrils was the breath of life. And, and man became a living soul. Okay. Give me okay, give me Genesis 27, 27. Genesis 27 verse uh, 27. No, I actually want her to hear it. She's gonna go and buy in the Sabbath, but right. 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 And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of the raiment and blessed him and said, see and smell my son. All right, so he's talking about Esau, who was going to get the birth, who was going to get the blessing. Okay, he's sitting down with Isaac now. Isaac is getting ready to die, so he's going to give his blessing before he dies. Okay. And smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Right. Therefore God did thee of the dew of heaven and the blackness of the earth. You got to go up because he was crying. Get to the one where he was crying. Genesis 27, start at verse. Matter of fact, 37. give me the one with that he sold the birthright. Let's start from there so we can go with the Genesis 10. All right? But remember, the woman also said that he sold his birthright for red stew. Right? That's in the Bible. She got that from the Bible. Okay. Genesis 25, verse 28. Okay, loud. Uh, 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. All right, so the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. Okay, the progenitor of the white man today. Go ahead. A man of the field. A man of the field. They're always in the field, man, hunting. Go ahead. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Jacob was a plain man. Okay, we're, we're plain people. And the answer, yeah, a lot of us are off oh, the yeah. hook right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, but tiene que tener paciencia, okay, porque la estoy enseñando ahora. Okay, le estamos enseñando 
quién, uh, quién son la, la gente, con la nación de los americanos, empezó. ¿Me entiendes? Okay, so, you understand Spanish, right? Okay. Right. Go, go teach him on the side. Give him the flies. Él te va a enseñar. Él te va a explicar. Give him the flies, please. Ezekiel, give him the flies, please. Okay. And Isaac loved Esau because Isaac he did, loved Esau, okay. because he didn't eat of his venture. But Rebecca loved Jacob. But Rebecca loved Jacob, go ahead. And Jacob saw pottage. And Esau came from the field and he was fake. So pottage, another word for pottage is stew. He was he was making uh, Jacob was making a stew. Okay, a pottage. When you read it in uh, uh Corinthians, it, right? When you read in Corinthians, Paul breaks it down that it's uh, in Hebrew, I'm sorry. In Hebrew, the book of Hebrews, he breaks it down that it was great for one great uh, apostle of peace. Okay, go ahead. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray you, with that same bread pudding. So he, Esau, okay, told Jacob, feed me, and he came hungry for the field with that same red pudding. Why did he use the word red? Because the stew wasn't cooked fully yet. The meat was still raw. Esau didn't care. He wanted to eat the red meat. Okay, and we brought it out earlier. Who's known for eating? Uh, 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 rare. Uh, how you like your steak? Let me get it rare. Or bloody as hell. Okay? These are all little proofs today that we're gonna, we were gonna see, okay, in the last days. Okay? Read it from the top again. Sis, you still listening? And Esau said to, to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red body, for I am faith. Therefore was his name called Edom. So as a result, that's when he was called Edom, because when we read earlier, okay, Edom means great. Okay? So go now to 27, 27. This is for you, it says, now he's gonna yeah, come to answer. 27, verse uh, 27. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do? be the smoke. And what shall I do unto thee, my son? Okay, so Isaac uh, told, uh, told uh, Esau, Okay, what should I do unto you? Why do you come to me? Okay, as I'm dying, what is it that you want? Go ahead. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? All right, because he asked him, Don't you have but one blessing for me? I'm your oldest. Don't you have your blessing for me? Go ahead. Bless me, even me also, oh my father. So bless me, even me also, because at this point, if I'm not mistaken, he already knew that uh, uh, Jacob had gotten blessed, that he took the, his blessing, because that's the way the Most High wanted it. Okay? Uh, go ahead. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. So he started crying, because he was like, Damn. I don't got a blessing, what's my blessing now? I'm the firstborn, what am I gonna get? Here's what the father told him. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. Stop one second. And Isaac his father answered and said, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. So the blessing was gonna be, he said, was gonna be the fatness of the earth, meaning that we're gonna live all over. Do they not live everywhere in every nation? So-called white people, go ahead. And of the dew of heaven from above. And then we're gonna live in the best places. Puerto Rico, for example. Puerto Rico is not Puerto Rico anymore. That's a tourist uh, 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 place now. They, even, I'll give you more proof. La Isla de Vieques. What have they done with that beautiful land? They've made it into a military base and they bombed it. Okay? They took everything. They take everything by force. When you read the book of Maccabees, it proves that Alexander the Greek, who the so-called white people in history likes to call him the Great, which we don't because there was nothing great about him, other than the fact they call him that because he's the, he was the one man that unified the white nation and became back in power again. But of course, like we read earlier, the Most High God allowed that to happen, to keep us in check until we start repenting and knowing who we are. Okay, go ahead. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. Uh, and by thy sword shalt thou live. So he said, by thy sword shalt thou live. You listen to this, sister? This is for you. I've changed the subject just for you now. By the sword shall thou live. Now, everything that the so-called white man takes, has it ever been with hugs and kisses or has it been violent? We all know that. Okay, do you know that? All the lands that the white people have today, have they taken it by just asking for it or have they taken it? I have, I look at the In history. I guess mostly people, they take it over with war, right? That's right, because check, that's a good point. Right, it, became, it becomes a war because we're not the Native Americans here first in America. How does the white man dominate over this? And they just, if, if you're in your house, sis, it's your house, you got a beautiful house, right? Somebody comes over and says, hey, I like your house, okay. It's your house here. Yeah. Okay, I'm taking this. 
beats you up or kills you, God forbid, and throws you out. Are you going to be happy with that? So when the Europeans came here to America, I'm going to start with them because that's more recent, okay? All right? They went ahead. Do you think the, our forefathers, our brothers and sisters, the Native Americans, they just gave the land over to the white man? You remember, right? There was a war. They killed. Do you know they killed all together? What was it, 77 million? They put them on that little state themselves, right? Guess what? They put them all on reservations, okay? Which, let me ask you, what's the difference between a reservation and projects? There ain't no difference. It's just another place to house the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Okay? So, they didn't take it by they asking for it. They took it by force, correct? All right? So read, read the blessing that the white man got. And by thy sword shalt thou live. By the sword shalt thou live. Today, how do they take it? By the armies, the military. That's why none of our children will ever fight in the military. Because they, they, they're, not, not, they're not defending us. The only one that defends us is the Most High God in Christ when we keep the commandments. That's our army right there. Yeah, because they don't know the truth. And the ones that do know the truth, when they find out the scriptures, they get out as soon as their time is up. I was in the Marine Corps. I fought in the first Gulf War. Okay? And guess what? I regret every bit of it because I was not fighting for my people. I was fighting for the white man. Okay? Because that war, and like all wars, is all about economics at the end of the day. Okay? Why are we over here now and all the Middle East and stuff like that? Again, oil, economy. Like the scripture said, what was that? Oil and opium. Okay? Drugs. Because America the government is the biggest drug dealer. You remember Noriega? Why they got rid of Noriega? Because he didn't want to play ball with them. But they were dealing drugs. Watch a movie called The Panama Deception. It explains all of that under George W. Bush when he was the leader of the CIA. See, a lot of y'all don't read, man. That's the problem, man. Our people don't read. You got to know history, then you got to put it together with what the Bible says, which is the one true book. Go ahead, read. And, and by thy sword shalt thou live, and thou shalt serve thy brother. Okay, by the sword, they're going to take everything by force, but in the end, they're going to serve their brother. Okay, go ahead. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Okay, and it shall come to pass that they're going to be in rulership. When did that happen? When Alexander the Greek unified the white race. That's why the white people call him Alexander the Great. Because prior to that, okay, we, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, the Israelites, were ruling the world under the Byzantine Empire. Okay, we were in charge. Okay, that happened in 193 AD under an uh, uh, Israelite man, okay, from the tribe of Judah called Septimius Severus, okay, the movie Gladiator was loosely based on that, okay, and we conquered the Romans in 193 AD, beat the crap out of them, they went into the mountains, they became desolate, and we ruled all the way to 1453, okay, AD, which was known as what, the Renaissance period, which is, Renaissance means what, the rebirth. What was the rebirth of? The rebirth of the white race. Okay, but prior to that, okay, Alexander the Greek was allowing all of that and he was putting all of that in motion. Okay, is there more on that? Okay, so now, uh, I'm going to show you that the Bible, it ain't not saying it's this, okay, because you said you're the, the, the father of your child is white, right? Yeah, he's, well, Irish. Well, he's Irish. Okay. Do you know that the Irish were the number one people that had us in slavery? Yeah. yeah. What's his last name? Curtis. Curtis? Do you know any black people with the last name Curtis? But they're out there. You ever heard of Johnson, Stewart, Smith, O'Neill, McMahon? There's a lot of people of color with those last names. How do you think they got those last names? Slavery. Right. Because when the slave owned you, they, you took on everything that was theirs. So in order for the other slave owners to know that that was their slave, if my name was McMahon, this guy here, he's my best slave, they would say. His name is now Willie Bob Thornton Johnson. Okay, or Bo. No fun, no fun intended. That's a comment. Okay? Or Bo Johnson. Okay, or Bo Diddley. Okay? They named them after themselves. Okay? Just like our last names Gonzalez, Rivera, or uh, Cortez. Those are all the names that the Spaniards gave us. We didn't have those names, sister, because this happened to us, to the so called Hispanics. Your forefathers, yes, you, Puerto Rico, was taken over in 1492 by Christopher Columbus, a European man. Okay, he destroyed, he did these atrocities. We didn't draw this. These are from books called Lost Tries and Promised Land, American Holocaust, Bartolome de las Casas, 
the history of the American Indians. We don't draw any of this. These are all from books. Me too. Okay? So now, okay, I know you didn't know, sister. Guess what? I didn't know either. I thought I was from Spain. I was proud. Well, guess what? That's true, but here's what I want to tell you because I know where you got where you're probably gonna go with this. Everybody's mixed, right? Okay, beautiful. Numbers 118. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together. Listen to this, listen to that. Brother, let me let her hit the Bible. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Okay, go ahead. And declared their pedigree. Who you really are. They were declaring who everybody was according to? According to their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. According to the house of your father. So like I brought up the scenario earlier. If I got an apple seed here, right? And first of all, semen is called seed, right? The man's semen is called seed. Well, I mean, that's what it's called. It's called the seed. The seed of your father. You ever heard that expression? Okay? It's the seed. The seed of population, seed of cop uh, copulation, okay? I'm going to quote you. It's the sperm, okay? And, and the sperm is in the Bible. They call it the seed of copulation. I mean, did you make it a phrase? That's disgusting, you know? Sex ain't disgusting, you know? Seed of copulation, okay? So it's the seed of the man. So if I have an apple seed here, and there's ground, there's dirt here, and I plant that seed, what kind of tree is going to grow? Apple tree, right? Now I take that same seed and go to Japan and plant it in the dirt in Japan, what kind of tree is going to grow? It's the seed of the man that determines who you are. Okay? So there's no such thing as mixed. You are who your father is. Yeah, you may have different from, from our history, but at the end of the day, it's who your father is. And I'm going to show you that the Most High had a plan for that. That even though the Spaniards raped our foremothers, okay, and some of them may make some of our for about maybe 0.1% roughly, just throw out a number, maybe European. Okay, it's still the seed of your father. Most I had a plan for that to make sure that everything worked out according to prophecy. Uh, okay, I said about the house of your fathers, right? Okay, so now I'm going to answer the different colors now, Hosea 7. Because you said you and I are light skinned, we are. Okay, so now let's see. But I also see also, okay, not that this is a big indication, but in the sun, you get a little dark. You don't get red, like the rednecks down south and stuff like that. You get some color. You get some color like my soul. Okay, this is color. You can tell the difference. Right. Right, right. They don't get like that. They don't got no melanin in their skin. Okay, go ahead. My sunburn, I have to put the sunburns, you gotta put the sunburn, right. And even you and I gotta put some sun protection, but sometimes in my nose. Right. But we don't get gray. You understand what I'm saying? As a nation, as a nation of people. Hosea chapter seven, verse eight. Okay, now here's the proof right here. Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. Now Ephraim. Okay, talking about the Latino and the Native American race. We mixed ourselves among the people, the Bible says. When did we do that? First of all, in our captivity. And prime example of mixing with other people now. You just mix with another person. Okay, but the Bible calls a heathen. Okay, go ahead. Ephraim is a cake, not turd. Okay, so it says Ephraim is a cake, not turd. I use the example. When you cook a pancake, what color is the bottom part? Dark, right? What color is the top before you flip it over? So what does the Bible say about the so-called Hispanics? Ephraim is a cake not turn. Read it slow. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turn. So he's describing us. You have some of us that are dark, some of us that are light-skinned. Okay, because you asked the question, but you like. Yeah. Okay. Way lighter than you. That's true. That my brother, my youngest brother, but guess what? Our father, we open the same father, he's an Ephraimite from the tribe of Ephraim. So even though he has light eyes and blondish hair, okay, he is an Israelite, according to the Bible, because you are who your father is. Okay? You, you follow me so far? Okay. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knows it not. Okay, the reason why you don't know, we don't know that we're the Israelites, because the strangers, the heathen, during slavery, okay, the Irish, the, the, the Romans, okay, the the, the fake Jews, okay, who aren't the real Jews, okay, they were the biggest ones that funded, that funded the slave trade, okay, go ahead. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knows it not. That's why we don't know who we are, okay, now, Hosea 9, okay, because, yes, some of us, 
during, during our, the captivity, especially the Spaniards, that's what stick with the Northern Kingdom and the Spanish, so-called, we were raped by the Spaniards, okay? And the women were. And so were some of the women that laid down with them voluntarily, okay? Because after a period of time, our women, like you did with your husband, you know, you had a liking to a white man. That was your preference at that time when you had, you know, when you had your son, okay? Same thing happened with our foremothers back then. But something happened to them that prevented whoever came out of them, whatever child was made from them, that they were not going to uh, uh, be around today, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Something happened. I'm going to show you what happened. Hosea 9, verse 13. Right. Ephraim. As I saw Tyrus is planted in a pleasant place. Why are we in a pleasant place? Because all the Caribbean, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Santo Domingo, it's a pleasant place. It's beautiful. Those are the islands in the Caribbean. Okay? But Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. So Ephraim, we're going to bring forth children to the murderer. The white man, European, Irish, the, the Russians, okay, they're the murderer according to the Most High God. Because they did these atrocities to our people. Okay, they murdered. Yeah, so you look at the up, pictures, you'll see that they did. Okay. Matter of fact, let me show you what the so called white man did. Look at the picture here. He has the baby that was just born by the leg. He's going to smash him up against a rock. Okay, that's our hero, the so called white man, our Brad Pitts. Go ahead. Give them, O oh Lord, what wilt thou give? All right, so he's praying. He's saying, Jose is saying, give them what you're going to give them, O oh Lord, for doing what they did, for raping our sisters. Go ahead. Give them a miscarrying womb. Okay, so but you know what a miscarriage is? Yeah. Okay. Hosea prayed and the Most High answered his prayer by the babies that were born for the murderers, the white man. Okay, they had miscarriages. The babies died before birth. Okay. Or, go ahead. And dry breasts. Or when they were born, he did not allow the woman to have milk in her breast. This is the women. Back then, they didn't have Inframil, Similac. You fed your baby with the breast. That's Hosea 9 and 13, it starts. Okay? So they were either they either died in the womb, okay, were born dead, or when they were born, he did not allow the woman to be able to nurture them with food, and they died. Okay? So whoever's an Israelite today, is it, who's a Hispanic today, okay, there's a very, very great, 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 great uh, uh, possibility that they're an Israelite. Okay, based on the scriptures alone. Okay, and I'm going to prove it based on this other scripture, Romans 8, 16. Because here's the kicker. Because here's the kicker right now. We're going to wrap it up. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So now, if after reading the Bible, I'm not going to have time to go into it now, but you get a flyer? Can he give you a flyer? You have it? Because after reading that, if all that stuff makes sense to you, it's either one or two, and, and, and one or two things are going to happen. You're going to repent and realize that the Bible is a true book, and that yes, you are an Israelite woman because your father's from, uh, from the tribe of Ephraim, of so-called Puerto Rican. Or you're going to say, I don't believe that, okay, and the Spirit's not going to hit right with you, Spirit being the Bible, and you're going to go about your ways, and when Christ returns, you're going to be destroyed. No, 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 your neighbor left you because he's been here since we started here and, he's, and he knows enough already, okay? That he, know, he knows he's an Israelite. Yeah, you can ask your neighbor when you go see him, okay? This woman here is a, is a so-called Puerto Rican. You know you're an Israelite, do you not? Okay? Well, the baby, your father, you said, you sure he's, he's uh, Irish, right? Right? Very blind, very, he likes cabbage, corned beef, all that stuff? Yeah, he likes, he ain't the Irish. But he's Irish, he knows that for a fact. He got the little Irish ring, holding the cup like that with the heart, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so according to the Bible, he's an Edomite. Okay? Give me uh, Revelation 13 and 9. Here's what's going to happen to anybody who is a Caucasian, a white man. Revelation 13, verse 9. Matter of fact, stop from, uh, yeah, yeah, 9. If any man have an ear, let, let him hear. All right, so Christ is saying, okay, in the spirit of the Most High is saying to John the Revelator, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Because what's about to come out is going to be heavy. Okay. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So now, captivity is another word for what? Slavery, right? If you're held captive, you're held against your will, right? Right? When you're, when you're a slave, are you held against your will? Okay, so that scripture says, he that 
lead him into captivity, he who put us into slavery, okay? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Shall go into slavery. Now, when you read here, the Arabs led us into captivity, so guess what? They're going into slavery when Christ returns. The Africans led us into slavery because the black people you see here today, they're not African, okay? They're Israelites. There is a difference in it. We have, for the sake of time, I can't get into that now, but we are here every Saturday, so you want to learn more about your history, you can come out here. But the Africans sold the so-called blacks, okay, into slavery as well. But guess who else sold us into slavery? The so-called white people. Yes, Christopher Columbus is a white man, okay, was a white man of European descent, okay? So he put us into slavery, did he not? Sis? Okay, you agree on that. So, read the scripture from the top again. He that leadeth into captivity. He that leadeth into slavery. Shall go into captivity. Shall go into slavery. Go ahead. He that killeth with the sword. He that killeth with the sword. You see plenty of pictures here that they killed us with the sword. When the American Indians uh, uh, were, were, were killed, they were killed with cannons. Okay, go ahead. Must be killed with the sword. No, it may, they may be killed. Must be killed with the sword. You heard, sis? They must be killed with the sword. She said you left because you don't believe, bro. No, I didn't say that. I said maybe he don't like it. Uh, anyway, so you heard that, sis? Maybe he don't think You heard? What, 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 what's going to be, uh, you asked me the question, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Yeah, well, read it again. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Now guess who's going to lead them? Who, guess who's going to be their slave master? And guess who's going to kill them with their swords when Christ returns? men you see up here and all those that relieve. That's according to the scriptures. Okay, give me Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13. Pakistanis, they're going to go back to their own people, so it don't matter if they're married to, some, to an Israelite man or woman. They're going to go back to their own people. That's what the Bible says. I'm not saying that. It says, read that again, since you don't think that it's me saying it. And they shall every man turn to his own people. Go ahead. And flee every one into his own land. And they're all going to go back to their own land. Go ahead. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Listen okay, so now, every one of them that are found by Christ and us, the men of Listen Israel, the men of the Most High's, uh, uh, God's army, are going to what? Shall be thrust through. We're going to cut them off. We're going to destroy them according to the Bible. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. And every one that is joined unto them shall now, fall now, by the sword. Now, understand something. This is when Christ returns. This is not now. Okay, make sure I put that out for the record. This is not going to happen now. This is what the Bible says is going to happen when Christ returns. Go ahead. And every one that is joined unto them. Read that slowly and read it loud so the sister can hear this. And everyone that is joined oh, unto them. So anyone that is joined to the other nations, predominantly the white man, if that's who you, you're hooked up with, married to them, hanging out with them, being their friend, what's going to happen to them? Shall fall by the sword. Y'all going to be destroyed too. So now the question is, sister, okay, and it's a process, and I know that right now you're like Neo in the Matrix, when he was told that the truth about, about who he really was, okay, and what the Matrix really was. I know right now it's hard for you to digest. Your husband's a white man. That's a decision you made, okay, which means that your son is a white man according to the scriptures. He's not half anything. Show me uh, if there's, if there's uh, half anything in the Bible. Get that. Deuteronomy 32 and 8. The Most High never had equality in the Bible. He was always, he divided all the nations by the nation of Israel, who are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Deuteronomy right. 32 verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. When the Most High divided the nations to their inheritance. When he separated the sons of Adam. When he separated the sons of Adam, us, the Israelites, go ahead. He set the bones of the people according to the number. I take that back, I stay corrected. He separated sons of Adam, but we all come from Adam. But he did a particular thing from everybody that came from Adam, go ahead. He set the bounds of the people. He set boundaries of all the people that came from Adam. According to the number of the children of Israel. So he separated everybody according to Israel, okay? There was never equality with us, with the Most High and any other nations. He never won. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 3 to show you that interracial marriage was never supposed to happen with our people. Okay, I'm going to show you. That's something that America allows and condones what today. What about the children? They, I, well, your children are you are who your father is, according to Numbers 118. So your son is a Caucasian, according to the Bible. Okay, read, uh, read that. Read that.
that first. Deuteronomy 7 verse 3. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shalt thou not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take to thy son. That was a commandment that the Most High God gave the Israelites when we, he took us out of Egypt. We were not supposed to mix because guess what? There was a mixed multitude of the heathen of the other nations that left with us. Kind of like today, they always want to cleave on to us. They always want to join up to the Hispanic and the black man. Okay? They, you see that a lot. When you go down, believe it or not, when you go down south in the Midwest, you see a lot of uh, white women with black men. You know, and our foolish black men and Hispanic men that hook on to them, they're going to have to pay judgment when that time comes. Okay? Go ahead. Is that it? All right? So now, go back to Revelation 13. Revelation 13 and 9 and 10. Because you asked what's going to happen to your son. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So because he's the seed of your husband, right? The seed of the husband is what makes the nation. Okay, he's a white. He's a white baby. He's white. He's Caucasian. He's from. He's from uh, the tribe of Esau. Okay, according to the Bible. Go ahead. He uh, that killeth with the sword right. must be killed with the sword. Must be killed with the sword. You follow what that says? Okay. But he's killed. He's over my stomach. Right. But who's? But what seed made him? See, the father. Give me four, uh, Isaiah fourteen twenty one. Here's what else is gonna happen to anybody who's not a Israelite man. Isaiah 14, verse 21. Babies and crew. Prepare slaughter for his children. Prepare slaughter for his children. Because you may be saying to yourself, you know what? My son never did anything. He shouldn't be held responsible for that. Uh, he, uh, he wasn't a slave master. Well, I'm going to prove that in the Bible that that's obviously false. But we were all here before many times over. So we were all slaves. Can't leave okay, the so-called blacks and Spanish Native Americans, oh. and the ones who were slave masters, they were slave masters back then too, because the Bible has a thing called regeneration. Our spirits regenerate; we come back, which is why Isaiah 14:21 says, "Prepare slaughter for his children." Prepare slaughter for the white man's children. For the iniquity of their father. For the what? For the iniquity of their father. For the sin, for the destruction that their forefathers, the so-called white man, did to your forefathers. The ones you really should be carrying. I know it's a tough to follow, sis. I know it. I know it. But that's a choice that you make. Now it's up to you if you want to go ahead and fear God, or if you want to go ahead and fear me. <laughs> that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor for the face of the world with city. So two things are gonna happen to your child. And again, don't be mad at me. I'm just a messenger. Okay? He's either gonna be destroyed when Christ returns, or if he lives long enough to see Christ return, he's going to be, what Sorry. Revelation 13 says, he's going to be our slave for a thousand years, and then he's going to, the white race is going to be destroyed forever and ever. That's what the Bible says. So, what you really should be saying to yourself, and I know from the Lord's perspective it's hard, but you should be saying, all praises to the Most High that he made me for the tribe of Ephraim. That's what you really should be saying. But, I got to give you the cold hard truth, your son's not going to make it. That's what the Bible says. Sorry. But it's not me. You know? Exodus 15 and 3. You don't know what God we serve. So, I'm sorry, sis. You know? You know? Like Exodus I said, you should be happy right now that you won't be destroyed if you repent. Exodus 15, verse 3. I, hey, you're not the only one that's crying, man. That, 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 that women. I, I get that a lot. Women cry a lot when I tell them. Sorry. I would on this the Lord is a man of war. What? The Lord is a man of war. Sister, the Lord is a man of war. He ain't playing. He ain't coming with a heart. Just because he look at the Gerber baby, he ain't going to have no, no sympathy on them. But he looked at the baby that was on a Pampers box. Get the hell out of here. He's going to destroy that baby. He don't give a damn. If you ain't an Israelite, he's going to be destroyed. That's it. Plain and simple. That's it? We're done? 328, Matthew 26. Matthew 26. All right, so we're commanded to read this scripture that the Father's going to bring out now whenever we out here preaching and we're done. Verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious money. Stop right there. Now, hold on a second, because you had the, you said when he left that he probably don't believe. This man has some wisdom, even though he's not following all the commandments now. I pray he does. We all pray he does. He just finished telling you that you're supposed to don't cry, stand for the Lord. Okay? I know it's a hard pill to swallow, sister, but hey, that's a decision you made. 
Now, granted, you made it because you didn't know you were an Israelite woman, but guess what? Matter of fact, I'm sorry, before you read that, I gotta go. Give me John 9 and 2. Okay? Because you gotta understand something, that we all pay for things we did in our past life. Understand, read this, and the, and the disciples knew this. John 9 verse 2. Verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. So Jesus was walking since then. He saw a man that was blind from his birth, meaning he was born blind. Go ahead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents? So disciples understood regeneration, that our spirits keep coming back. They asked Christ, who sinned that that man was born blind? Him in his past life, he was referring to, or his parents. So yes, your children will pay for what you do. Okay, go ahead. That he was born blind, Jesus answered, neither. Okay, now Jesus said what? Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. All right, so in this particular instance, it wasn't because he sinned, he did it because he wanted to prove Christ. You understand what I'm saying? So understand, sis, that's a decision you made. Now understand something, you still gotta raise that child, okay? You gotta nurture that child, that's your child. But when that child is old enough to be on his own, you have to make a decision soon or uh, it's up to you. That is nice. You know, that's your decision. We brought out the word. We did what we're supposed to do as men of the Most High God, as the prophets and the messengers. Okay, you have to, you must take care of that child. Okay, we have. I'll give you an example. We have some brothers and some sisters that came in this truth. They repented, and they have the same situation like you. Okay, they still got to take care of those children. But guess what? When those children are of age that they could take care of themselves, they gotta let them go. Okay. You gotta let him go. You still gotta raise that child. There's no that child will not be accepted in the kingdom of heaven. I don't care what any Catholic priest. The Bible says they're not gonna be accepted. I gotta bring it raw according to the Bible, sis. But I'm, you know, I don't know about the story. So I was telling the Catholic, my mother was trying to have It's not about a religion, sis, it's about a heritage. This is your heritage. The Bible is your heritage. That's what you need to follow. Not uh, these, these Catholics and all these other religions. They are, they're, gonna, they're only leading you to destruction. Catholic religion and all these other religions, Pentecostal, say that it's okay, that he's going to be saved. That's not what the Bible says. We just read it to you. Bapt Again, Catholicism says that you're supposed to be baptized with your baby. That's not in the Bible. Christ never baptized anybody when you read John 4. Okay, that was all symbolic, meaning being born again. That whole ritual, which is what it is, is a pagan ritual. Okay? I was baptized. Yeah, I was raised Catholic. Yeah, I'm sure. I was baptized in my confirmation, my communion, all them damn wicked things. And I know now as a man that that was all wicked. That's all of the devil. You know? So, sis, you should actually, those tears should be tears of joy. Because if you repent and change your ways, get out of those pants, start wearing a dress like the Bible said we're supposed to, start acting and following the. the yeah, it is. What, what color are you bleaching? Okay. I try to get a blonde and it's blonde. Why you want blonde hair? It's pretty? Okay. Give me red, give me Leviticus 13. Let's see how pretty the most I got thinking of this blonde hair is. Because you understand blonde is a French word that means yellow, right? Blonde means yellow in French. Let's see what the Bible says about having yellow hair or blonde hair. Okay, now. Understand what blonde hair means according to the most high God, right? Leviticus 13, verse 30. Let's say closely. 29. If a man or a woman have a plague upon the head or the beard. So if the man or woman has a plague upon the head, on the hair, or their beard, go ahead. When the priest shall see the plague. When the priest shall see this plague, that the, that's the topic, go ahead. And behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin. It be in sight deeper than the skin, go ahead. And there be in it a yellow thin hair. A what? A yellow thin hair. Yellow thin hair, blonde, because blonde is a French word for yellow, go ahead. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. That's unclean, sister. So we see a lot of our Hispanic and black sisters dyeing their hair blonde. Why? You're putting leprosy, you're putting a plague on your head. Be happy with what you got, sisters. No, I didn't put that, I put peroxide. To try to make it what? Blonde. Blonde. Yeah. That's a plague you're putting on your hair, according to the Bible. Read it again. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it is and if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be a yellow thin hair. Yellow thin hair, blonde. Blonde is a French word for yellow. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. The priest said, I, the most I says that you are unclean. It is a dry skull, even leprosy. It's leprosy. So that's why the white people, they have blonde hair and their skin is like that. That's actually a curse that was put on them. Okay? Understand that. 
And that's not a beautiful thing. Blondes have more fun. Oh, everybody want to be like the white woman. Why? You are, I just finished reading to you. You're, you're, God's, you're God's child. You're an Israelite. You repent and stuff on the Lord's statue of the commandments. You're going to get everlasting life, immortality. They ain't going to get that. Okay? You have to understand that. We are here for you and all our other brothers and sisters that are black, Hispanic, Native Americans that don't want to repent and change their life. Okay? You another question? Well, uh, what's with the pants? That's a law. That's a law. Okay, yeah, women's not supposed to be dressed like a man. Okay? <laughs> pants, pants, are, pants, are, pants are, were always for men. Even girly pants? Even girly pants. That's a crafty way of the white man trying to put sin on the so-called black and Hispanic woman. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. It was never accepted, not even by the white man. What's that That was never accepted. Here's an article. This was a research paper written by a white woman. Okay? Pants phenomenon. The switch from skirts to trousers. Okay? You read this. It's too long. I can't go into it. And we got to leave. But when you read this, just go online. Google it. Put in research paper. Pants phenomenon. Put this in the, online in the Google search engine. Okay? In a nutshell. What does that say? Okay? It basically says that pants were never accepted, even by white, by white people. It was during the women's feminist movement in the 1940s after World War II. When the men, all the men went off to fight, the, uh, the economy was, fa was failing because there was no men to work in the industries, in the manufacturing, in the factories. So they allowed women to work, okay? And the, 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 the dresses were getting caught on the machinery. So they allowed them to wear overalls while they were working. But some rebellious women, like you see here, white women, they said, I'm gonna wear this out in the street. And they started making it a fashion. But if you read this, it was never accepted. Okay? Pants were never worn. You look at your foremothers from back in the days, I know you're, you're probably in your 20s. Okay? Your foremothers, generation ago, they never wore uh, a pants. That's a custom they learned in America. Okay? So it's an abomination and the most High God said to read. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So now, the second part says, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What's a woman's garment? A dress, right? But what is the wearing? This ain't a dress. This is a garment. This is a warrior apparel garment. This is the way our forefathers dressed, okay, back in the days. Okay, you see the fringes and everything? This is how we dress. Okay, because the Bible says this is how we're supposed to dress. You're supposed to have a dress on with these in the bottom of your dress. With a border of blue. Okay, see what you're going to get. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear pants that pertaineth to a man. Go ahead. Neither shall a man put on a woman's gun. And a man should not be dressing like a woman. These cross dresses, transvestites. Now they're even trying to push the fashion, the hip hop. Some of them. Who wears the dress? Uh, Will Smith's son has on a dress. Kanye. Uh, Kanye West. Who else? Uh, All of them. Uh, they wear, I've, I've never seen them wear. They wear a dress. Put Kanye West skirt, and you'll see him come up on the images in Google. Okay, that's all what? What is the most high call? All that do so are abomination. Abomination is a detestable thing to the most high God. Just like he hates lying, he hates the women wearing dressing like men. Because what does a man do? Let me ask you, I'll give you an example. You can you can ask, this, okay? When you throw on a suit, you walk different than when you dress like that, don't you? It puts out a well, when you put on a suit, I, I, I walk the same way. Well, in your spirit, okay, you feel different. You don't feel the same. You ain't gonna go play basketball with a suit, right? Because you ain't gonna feel right. Okay, I'm just using it as an example. Same thing happens with the women, okay? When a woman puts on pants, okay, it puts that manly spirit on them. It's a spiritual thing. It's the same way a man feels different. Than, because to be honest with you, sister, the way you dress right now, you're revealing a lot, too much. Nobody should be seeing that but your husband. Sister, I can see everything on your body. You're not being, you're not dressing modest. No, I don't got to come up like that. Sister, I can see the curvature. Okay? Those things that you're wearing right now, you know who made that a style? The white woman. Those are things to go work out in the gym. Those are leggings. They should be worn under a dress. Or go work out in the gym. White woman started walking down the Central Park with the leggings. All the Hispanic and black women. Oh, I could do that too. The white woman could do that. I could do that too. And now here you go. And all our other sisters dress like that. It's an abomination to most high God. You understand what I'm saying? You got to get out of the pan. You got to repent. You're an Israelite woman.
okay? You have to start changing your ways, just like he has to start changing his ways. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.